Hello friends, welcome to a new episode of Drishti IS Editorial Analysis. In this editorial analysis, we do three things. First of all, we link the editorial to the UPSC syllabus. Secondly, we try to understand the key points of the editorial. And thirdly, if any important concepts have been covered in the editorial and are important from exam point of view, we also discuss that. So let us begin today's editorial analysis. We have taken today's editorial from the Indian Express and it has appeared on 18th of May. The title of the editorial is The Taiwan Question. And it says, Delhi's decision must be based on a pragmatic appreciation of issues involved. It must find a middle path. So it directly links with GS paper 2, where we have international relations. Because this issue impinges on India's relations with China. So it comes under India and its neighborhood relations as well. And it also comes under important international institutions because it deals with World Health Organization. So after establishing this link with the syllabus, now let us look at the key point. The editorial begins by saying that as the World Health Assembly convenes this week virtually because these days the meetings of all the multilateral organizations and groupings like G20, SARC, etc. is taking place virtually because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So there is an ongoing battle over the question of inviting Taiwan to join the discussion in the World Health Assembly as an observer. So Taiwan already had this observer status between the period 2009 to 2016 when China and Taiwan had better relations. But since 2016, Democratic Progressive Party is in power in Taiwan and it wants independence for Taiwan. Whereas the other party, the Comintern Party, it advocates better relations with the mainland China. And China for its part, it regards Taiwan as a breakaway province which has to be ultimately united with the mainland China. So once this democratic progressive party came to power in Taiwan, then China started objecting to Taiwan's status as observer in, in World Health Assembly and it uh, utilized its influence to revoke the status of observer from Taiwan. Because as we know that China is one of the major funding countries of WHO. So China does exercise a lot of influence. Also China does not allow other countries to keep diplomatic relations with Taiwan under China's One China policy. This we will see in more detail under the key concept section. Now the editorial says that the World Health Assembly brings together the ministers from all the member states of the World Health Organization. Also some observers, Vatican City and organizations like the International Red Cross. Now those who are in favor of Taiwan's participation as observer in the World Health Assembly, they point to Taiwan's success in dealing with the coronavirus and its role in contributing to international cooperation against the COVID challenge. So Taiwan has been very successful in dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and it has had very few deaths. And many countries feel that Taiwan as an observer to the World Health Assembly can share its experience which the other countries can also utilize in their fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. But on the other hand, China has been adamant in its refusal. So China has been strongly opposed to let Taiwan attend the meeting as observer. Taiwan makes the point that WHO should be focused on promoting global health only and it should not exclude Taiwan on some political considerations. Now this Taiwan issue puts India in a difficult position because India is all set to be elected this week as the chairman of the executive board of the WHO and the board's responsibility is to advise and facilitate the assembly's work and because this issue is going to be raised in the executive board and India as the chairperson will have to take a call on this and many of India's partner countries like US, Japan, Australia and here we should know that these three countries along with India form the grouping quad. Now these countries are supporting Taiwan's presence as observer in the World Health Assembly. Now on the other side, China is totally opposed to Taiwan's inclusion as an observer and it is pressing India to support its position. So India finds itself in a difficult position. Now what are the options on the table for India? The editorial says that whatever might be Delhi's eventual choice on the Taiwan question, whether to accept it as an observer or to reject the observer status. It should not be made out of irritation with China or out of this fear of China because both ways it will not reflect well on India and India must try to maintain its principal stand on this issue because there is a school of thought which feels that this is a good moment to pay back China in the same coin and we have been seeing repeatedly 
that China has been creating trouble for India in gaining energy membership and it has been supporting Pakistan all the time. Plus when India is trying to get Pakistan blacklisted in FATF, it is China which is not allowing it to happen. And the same was the case with the designation of Masood Azhar which finally China accepted after a very long time where it kept on putting the technical hold and also the China Pakistan economic corridor project which passes through the Gilgit Baltistan area. So all these places you can see that China has been getting its way and not considering India's objections at all while deciding its course of action. And the same is also seen in the staple visa issue also. This kind of staple visa is issued to the people belonging to Arunachal Pradesh which China claims as its own territory and they are not given a proper visa, they are given a staple visa which raises doubt over the status of Arunachal Pradesh that it is disputed. So China has been doing all this. So one school of thought in India is that it is the right moment to pay back China in the same coin by making sure that Taiwan enters as an observer. This school of thought also talks about the Chinese efforts in the last few months also to get the UN Security Council to discuss the Kashmir question. So they say that when China is not respecting one India policy, then why India should blindly follow a one China policy? So on the other side, we have people who point to the dangers of upsetting China, especially when the bilateral relations are going through a difficult phase also because of the military tensions on the border are rising. And also because India and China have good trade relations and there is a lot of bilateral trade happening between the countries. So India should do smart diplomacy and not fall into the trap of seeking a revenge. And here we should also know about the Wuhan spirit and the Chennai connect which was the outcome of the two informal summits held between India and China. That phase India and China relations have been improving over the years and no doubt there are some challenges but this Taiwan issue should be kept away from the bilateral issues between India and China and it should be dealt based on merit of the case only. The editorial also says that these approaches taking one-sided view whether in favor of China or against China will only lead to India erring in one of the two directions. And it further says that India has never recognized Taiwan as a separate nation and there is no basis for confusing or mixing it with Taipei's presence as observer at WHO. Now, you should also be knowing that Taiwan it was formerly known as Formosa. So editorial says that Delhi or India has never recognized Taiwan as a separate nation and there is no basis for mixing Taiwan's presence as observer at WHO with India's consistent one China policy. So these two are separate issues and should be considered separately that India follows one China policy which is fine but at the same time Taiwan's entry into World Health Assembly as observer does not mean that India is not respecting the one China policy and China should also understand that. At the same time, India cannot afford to cede to Beijing a veto over its approach to multilateral issues. This means that India should not allow Beijing or China to dictate how it should act in any multilateral organization or in multilateral diplomacy. India has to have its strategic autonomy. China is not respecting these things in all these cases, be it FATF, be it NSG, be it uh, designating Masood Azhar or any such uh, Pakistan sponsored terrorists as international terrorists and imposing sanctions on them. Everywhere China is only pursuing its own self interest. So why should India allow China to dictate terms to it? So that should not be allowed. India should keep its strategic autonomy and should not mix the two issues of Taiwan's entry into World Health Assembly if it enters and following the one China policy. So editorial at the very end suggests that a sensible middle path for India would lie in the a political appreciation of the specific technical issues involved and an objective merit based decision. So this is what India should do. India should treat this issue in a, a political manner. It should be seen only as a technical issue and India has to play the role of a consensus builder in the executive board of the World Health Organization so that the consensus among the countries should decide whether Taiwan enters as an observer in the World Health Assembly or not. It should be purely 
a technical objective and merit based decision so these were the key points of the editorial now let us look at the key concepts concepts to learn we'll look at world health organization world health assembly and one china policy first of all let's have a look at the map which is showing taiwan so here we have taiwan and this is the south china sea this is the east china sea and here we have the pacific ocean so we see that taiwan is located very strategically whenever we come across any country especially in international relations we should always make a point to look it up on the atlas so let's look at world health organization this is a running joke in the un circles that world health organization is that un agency that knows everything but does nothing and this has been proved in the case of ebola outbreak and also in the case of covid-19 outbreak but that seems to be a little harsh criticism of world health organization so world health organization is the united nations specialized agency for health and was founded in 1948 and its headquarters is in geneva switzerland and right now we have 194 member states in un as well and also these are member states of world health organization as well it has 150 country offices and 6 regional offices the regional office for southeast asia is located in delhi only and it is an intergovernmental organization and works in collaboration with its member states usually through the ministries of health and it began functioning on april 7 1948 which is now known as the world health day so this is important from pt point of view this we should know now let's look at the world health assembly it is composed of delegates representing members and each member is represented by not more than 3 delegates one of whom is designated by the member as the chief delegate and the world health assembly is the supreme or the apex decision making body for world health organization and it generally meets in geneva in may each year and this time it's going to be a virtual meeting and is attended by delegations from all 194 member states and its main function is to determine the policies of the world health organization and it also supervises the financial policies of the organization and reviews and approves the budget so it is very important and it reports to the economic and social council in accordance with any agreement between the organization and the united nations let's look at the executive board where india has got elected for a three year term and it will be taking over as the chairperson from japan which has just finished its one year term and india will also be chairman for one year term the chair is rotated between the regional groups for one year so india is also going to be in the chair for one year and at a very critical time when the world is facing this covid-19 pandemic so executive board is composed of 34 individuals technically qualified in the field of health and each one designated by a member state elected to do so by the world health assembly and the member states are elected for three year term the main function of the board are to give effect to decisions and policies of the world health assembly to advise it and generally to facilitate its work there is also a secretariat of the world health organization and it comprises the director general director general right now is from ethiopia he is under a lot of controversy he is dr tedros there is an allegation that he favored china and he totally kept the world in dark about covid-19 so there are a lot of conspiracy theories that china has invested heavily in ethiopia because dr tedros comes from ethiopia so he was obliged to to the chinese line but there is no evidence as such of this so one doesn't know what the truth is and the director general is appointed by the health assembly and on the nomination of the board so the board is quite powerful now there is also membership and associate membership so members of the united nations become members of the world health organization and territories or group of territories which are not responsible for the conduct of their international relations may be admitted as associate members by the world health assembly now let us look at some of the organizational challenges that who is facing especially during this covid-19 pandemic so who is largely dependent on donor funds mainly from rich countries like us china is also a major donor and foundations like the bill and melinda gates foundation which actually compromises the who's ability to act independently because as we all know that when finance is involved so you have to do as per the wishes of the donor so sometimes the programs are aligned with the objectives of the donor countries or the donor organizations so who has been suffering from insufficient funding structuring staffing and its lethargic bureaucracy and therefore india has been talking about the reforms in who which it intends to pursue now as the executive 
board member. But it has said that it will do so only once the COVID-19 threat is addressed by the world. Now the organization's efficacy has come under question, especially after its inadequate performance containing West Africa's Ebola epidemic of 2014, also its recent COVID-19 pandemic handling. So there has been a lot of controversy, but these organization challenges require some reforms in WHO's structure and functioning and as well as its funding. Because as long as the funding is contingent on few countries, then it will always take away from the independent action of the World Health Organization. Now let's look at the One China policy. Now the One China policy refers to the policy of view that there is only one state called China despite the existence of two governments that claim to be China. And which are these two governments? One is the mainland China government which is known as People's Republic of China and there is the Taiwan government which calls itself Republic of China. So obviously People's Republic of China which is the mainland China it is more powerful and it follows this one China policy that any country with which it is having diplomatic relations has to adhere to this one China policy and should not keep any diplomatic relations with Taiwan. And China sees Taiwan as a breakaway province to be reunified with the mainland. Though the two countries participate separately in international events and China repeatedly has insisted that Taiwan should be called Chinese Taipei. So that is why we hear of these two terms Taiwan or Chinese Taipei which means one and the same. And what is the background of this uh, Taiwan and mainland China? So after the surrender of Japan during World War II, the island of Taiwan was put under Chinese control and towards the end of the Chinese Civil War which culminated in 1949, members of the Kuomintang party led by Chiang Kai-shek. They were driven out of the mainland by the communists who later established People's Republic of China and the KMT retreated to Taiwan and became a government in exile and it took the name of Republic of China. So here one should also know about the Nagoya resolution under which the National Olympic Committee of the Republic of China which is Taiwan would be recognized as the Chinese Te Taipei Olympic Committee and its athletes would compete under the name Chinese Taipei. Now what is India's stand on the One China policy? Since 1949, India has accepted the One China policy which accepts Taiwan and Tibet as part of China. However, India also wants that since it is accepting One China policy, China should also believe in One India policy which China has so far not done and especially when we consider something like CPEC which undermines India's territorial sovereignty. Now let us look at what kind of questions can be asked in PT and means. So in PT one can be asked about World Health Organization, how many member countries are there and which is the apex decision making body. So we have this World Health Assembly. Then also one can be asked about the executive board, its composition, how many members are there and so on and who India has replaced as the chair of this executive board. So India has replaced Japan and also about the one China policy. So in means one can be asked about the reforms needed in World Health Organization about its funding issues, why its funding is dependent on few countries and how it compromises its objectivity in dealing with various health challenges and also its handling of the COVID-19 pandemic, whether it acted at the behest of China as is being alleged by various countries like US. And then one can also be asked about this one China policy vis-a-vis -vis the one India policy. So China expects India to follow this one China policy but on the other hand it has not been that keen on a one India policy especially with its CPEC initiative. So these are the kind of questions that one should be prepared on. So this was all in today's editorial analysis. See you next time with another editorial. Thank you.